Today's video we're going to take a quick look at setting up the Node-RED environment on a Raspberry Pi and using it to control a set of three LEDs to represent a traffic light pattern. Let's get going. Um, what we have here is uh, the browser here on my Macintosh and the terminal. Uh, we're looking at the NPM package for Node-RED and over here we're going to log into my Raspberry Pi 3. And I went ahead and installed uh, Stretch Lite on this machine. So it's got the really basic, uh, but up-to-date Linux with not a heck of a lot else. Uh, so that meant I also had to install Node.js. So I have a, a newer version of Node on here. Um, process for installing that is pretty straightforward and I'll post the link to that in the description. Um, so let's go ahead and install Node-RED, which is a npm package here but it has a, a slightly unusual install process because it needs some unsafe permissions that normally wouldn't be granted so we'll just do that and let it run Now it is it's ready, uh, so we can now start it up with just no dash red. It's telling us to connect to 127.001 port 1880. Uh, this Pi has the stretch light, so it doesn't have a graphical desktop or a browser on it. So we're going to connect to it from the Macintosh browser over here where we can see it as 192.168.1.12 1880 having done that we've now got the Node-RED graphical programming environment and we've got a blank what's called a flow uh, so what we're going to do from here is connect some hardware to the Pi and start playing with it what we've got here is a regular Raspberry Pi 3 but any version will do that has enough GPIO pins uh, connects to three pins and a ground and I'll put a link in the description as to where to get these LED traffic lights from um, first off let's give it a better name than flow one so we'll call it UK traffic light pattern and we'll hit done that and then we have a bunch of these nodes over here that we can drag onto the thing to do the canvas to do different things um, so we're going to build a set of states that we need for a traffic light so we're going to need this function node um, and we're going to call it uh, red because the first state of the traffic light is having um, the red light on we're going to need another function node in the UK traffic lights go from red to red and yellow so we'll call this guy red and yellow uh, we're going to need another function node because after the traffic lights been red and yellow it's then going to be green and then after it's been green it has further state of being just yellow on its own and then it goes back to red so that's kind of all the states um, obviously these states uh, don't transition immediately. The light just doesn't go red, 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 yellow, green, yellow, red, and just cycle around that really quickly. We need to put some sort of delay in there. So for that, we have delay nodes. So we'll put a delay node in here, and we'll put a delay node here, and a delay node here, and a delay node down the bottom here. Um, so now what we've got is like state of the light, and then delay, state of the light, delay, repeat. Um, so what we now need to do is hook these guys up so we can drag the connector from here to here, say red, then delay five seconds, then after delay five seconds, red and yellow, then after that, delay five seconds, then green, oops, move this guy around, then green, and after green, delay five seconds, then yellow, and another delay, and then after that we go back to where we started from, so we're back to red. So this is kind of like our basic state machine, if you like. So we have red and then delay a bit, red, yellow, another delay, green, another delay, yellow, another delay, and we start over again. Um, the 
thing with traffic lights though is all of these delays aren't equal so we'll set them to be slightly different so we'll say red can come on for three seconds and after three seconds we're going to go to red and yellow red and yellow is generally a pretty short state so we'll have that happen for just the one second and it's going to go to green and we want to let some cars go through so let's have green on for five seconds before we go to yellow and then give them a warning that they need to stop so five seconds probably a bit too long for that so let's say two seconds oops two seconds and that's our basic state setup um, so what we need now is some way of starting that so we'll go up here we'll have an inject node which is kind of like just a way of starting the flow we'll configure the inject node um, we don't need anything in its payload because we're not going to send anything to the next state so we'll just create empty object in the payload here and we'll say start it after 0.1 seconds so as soon as we deploy this flow the inject node is going to do something it's going to send this payload to whatever it's connected to so we need to connect that guy to red here so that we now have a flow of start red delay red and yellow delay and so on and then all the way back to red again so we should now be able to like deploy this which will make it operate it's deployed and what you see is the blue down here moving between the states as the delays happen so it'll go to delay two seconds next and then back up to red and delay three seconds so what we next need to do is actually make something happen with the hardware so we have three leds here connected to the pi we actually need to make them do something so we can see a physical representation of these states and the transitions Now we've got our flow up and running, uh, we need to connect it to the hardware and make it do something useful. Um, so for this we have down here somewhere in the Raspberry Pi section we have Raspberry Pi GPIO input and Raspberry Pi GPIO output. Um, each of the LEDs on the traffic light represent an output so we need one of these for each light. So let's pull these out onto the canvas here. And then each one of these needs to be configured uh, to know which pin it's connected to. So uh, GPIO 9 here, number 21, that's the red pin. Let's call that red, the digital output, and we'll just leave it at initialized zero. So this node here is going to expect an input of zero or one in the node red flow, so we'll have to hook that up later, but for now let's just leave it like this configured to that port and not connected to anything similarly we need to do the same thing for yellow so let's open this guy up yellow is connected to GPIO 10 which is 19 there again digital output we'll check it's going to be initially low we'll say yellow and we're done and finally green same thing um, Green is connected to GPIO 11, which is number 23 on the list here. So, that and green. So now we've got a load of states here and some lights, which are the things that are controlled by the state machine. Uh, but as you can see, there's no connection between the, uh, the states and the lights. So what we next need to do is edit each of these functions over here to create a, a representation of the state in a node red message and be able to pass it into each of the lights so that at each step in the flow the lights know whether to be switched on or off. So now we need to set some data in each one of our states over here in the function nodes and then hook that up to the GPIO nodes so that the lights turn on and off at the right time. So if we open up one of the function nodes here we can write just node.js javascript in here um, and it's expected that the function returns a message and the message has a dot payload so we're going to set our payload to be the desired state of the lights for this particular state so when it's red red is going to be on and the other two are going to be off so we're going to do message dot payload equals uh, red and we're going to set that to one being on yellow 
we're going to set that to zero being off and green we're going to set that to zero also being off and then it's going to return message to the next thing in the file so we'll copy that because what we're going to do here is store that and then for red and yellow we're going to do the same thing except now we're going to have both red and yellow as one and green remains zero then for green we're going to do the same paste again so now we're going to turn red and yellow off and we're going to switch green on and then for yellow on its own we are obviously going to paste this here and then we are going to turn that off and turn this on and done and if we deploy this again what you'll see is we successfully deployed um, and things continue to move around but still nothing's happening because nothing's connected to the GPIOs so if we were to look at the Pi itself the, the lights remain off so what we need to do now is figure out a way of connecting each of those function states on the left over to each of the three lights so that each light gets the right value from the payload for it. So now we need to make each of the states in our state machine which is passing an object around. So we have this object with one key for each of the, the lights. Each of those values needs to drive the value that's passed into the GPIO input here to turn it on or off. Uh, but we have a bit of a mismatch because each state is an object and each GPIO here expects a message payload that contains either 0 or 1 or true or false and not an object. So what we need to do is add something to the, the canvas here that will take that object and strip it down to just the value that that one light expects. So we'll do that with another function node. We'll call this like get red. And what this is going to do is it's going to receive a message called MSG, and the payload of that is going to be the payload that we set up with our states. So it's going to have red, yellow, and green keys. And what it needs to do is turn that message into just a message with a payload that just has the red key. So we're just going to say message.payload equals message.payload.red. So we take the whole object and just turn it into the one zero or one value that our GPIO then expects. So we'll do that for red. Uh, likewise, we'll drag another one out of here and we'll do the same thing for, call it get yellow. Oops, get yellow. And get yellow needs to do the same thing, except it's obviously going to look at the yellow key here. And then we'll tidy that up a little bit and then get green down here is funnily enough going to do exactly the same thing for the green key so get green here return message message dot payload dot green so once we've done that we need to hook these guys up so the output of that being just a number in the payload goes to each of the gpios here and then we'll just move these guys across to the right here a bit, get some more space, line them up nice and tidy, and then what happens, or what needs to happen is every one of our states here, it needs to emit that object into each of these functions, so in every state the red, yellow and green lights get told what to do. So the diagram's about to get a little bit messy, but we need to take a connector and connect it from red to red and red to yellow and red to green and then similarly for these other states so when it's red and yellow state we're going to need to tell every light what to do like that and for the green state same thing second one goes in and the third one and then finally the yellow state is also going to need to know about or every light is going to need to know about the yellow state. There we go. So with everything now connected to everything, as we move through the states, what's going to happen is red will turn red on and yellow and green off, and those will get passed into the GPIOs, and the lights will, will turn on or off, and then we'll hit a delay, and that state will be held for three seconds, and we'll go to red and yellow. Uh, same thing happens with the LEDs. They'll get switched around. 
another delay and, and so on down the stack and then all the way back up to the top to red. So if we go ahead and deploy that, what we should see is that the lights on the Raspberry Pi start to work in the desired pattern and sync up with the blue marker that's moving around the diagram here. That's it, that's um, my basic tutorial on how to set up these traffic lights uh, with Node-RED and how to work with GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. Um, I've been using Node-RED for one day so far, so I'm sure there's probably better ways you could do this, and if you know of them, feel free to let me know. Thanks very much, bye.